Ladies and gentlemen, a short acknowledgement here before we get rolling with the video. Uh, DeWalt and I have partnered up to create and present this video for you. DeWalt has provided us with accessories used in this video and they've also provided us with the tools to display their provided accessories. I want to thank DeWalt for the paid product placement and sponsorship for letting me walk to talk and get her done and lastly I want to thank uh, DeWalt for the opportunity to host the DeWalt accessory giveaway all right and I'm gonna announce have an announcement at the end of the video all right so stay tuned hang on all right who's ready for a video I am let's go ladies and gentlemen welcome to turn right machine works my name is Keith and we're in here at the shop once more now I have an old project here in fact I've been hanging on to this for some time for this occasion uh, this is a one inch shaft and we have an old rusty coupling now I want to share a pointer on a dire situation where you have an old shaft with a frozen coupling in your boat and you happen to hit ground and it has a bend actually this one does have a bend see even right here they gave me a note on the shaft bent here all right um and of course they did get the coupling off finally but before they got the coupling off they had already put a saw cut across here and they gave up because they couldn't they couldn't cut across this um, and one thing led to another and they finally pulled out the coupling now they did save the old coupling not this one but one just about like this same size and configuration maybe a different register different type of transmission but it's still just like this one here which I'm gonna mount on here and we're gonna go through an example of removing this coupling that's frozen on that can't come off of this shaft and will sacrifice the coupling because this is a hundred dollars all day long and a marine shaft like this is 500 600 bucks all day long all right now some people say well that it was junk okay i have several shafts that are still running in boats today that are running closer than 2000s run out and they were bends similar to this Okay, it took some it took some work. It actually took work to to fit an old junk coupling on here uh, because this this of course came off of another shaft. But we had to uh, actually clean out the bore, and uh, we had to hammer out that key, and then uh, we got it to slide on here, and then we uh, hammered the uh, uh, the butt end of this key and tapped it in there until it hit that ramp and it locked it in there good. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and because this is a easy, comfortable place and I want to hold this secure for my demonstration. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set it up in this vise here. I'm going to give it a little bit of, of uh, angle here and <clears throat> we'll tighten it up and then I'm going to run and grab my uh, tools and we'll come back here. We'll get you pointed in the right direction and I'm going to show you how I split this coupling off of the shaft in place. Right here. I'm going to put the key so we're top dead center here. I'm taking uh, my Sharpum and creating a mark here in a line and uh, you might as well go ahead and run one out here. This gives you a straight eyeball line that you can play with. We're going to come in here and we're going to cut straight on down till we get to the depth of that key. That way we have an area and a safe zone to create our cut, split this coupling, and then we'll be able to take a wedge and tap it in there. Most of you on the boat has got a screwdriver somewhere around, except for the ones that come in the shop that are already stuck in here and you can't get them out uh, by the time you get in here and sometimes those really aren't reusable okay what are we going to come down what we're going to slice that with well we're going to use an xp ceramic uh cutting wheel made by dewalt 
DeWalt's XP Ceramic Metal Cutting Wheels. All right, they're a high performance, high concentration ceramic grain. They'll deliver aggressive material removal and long life. All right, so that's what we're going to use in here. We actually have two right here, and they're, they're actually two different uh, uh, designs go into these two wheels here. And uh, this is a, a DWA DeWalt 8953F. And, uh, and that's for the stainless steel materials. And this is a DWA 8953L, and that is for the ferrous materials. And uh, this is the one that we're going we're gonna to use. And uh, we're going to start out with that one there. We're going to play with the other one here, but after this job, uh, we want to go ahead and continue our demonstration on splitting this coupling and saving you dollars. And that's what it's all about. All right, so what am I going to drive that wheel with? Well, <clears throat> back in the early 90s, this was my favorite tool. I remember I had I had a couple other brands of of cutoff tools and uh, it, when I got the Dewalt, it, 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 I mean it's still running great today. And I've I've put new bearings in it and I've rebuilt. You can rebuild every every part of a Dewalt here, and I have over the years. Even had to put a new cord on it. And uh, so this one here, and this was um, this this was a seven and a half amp. Uh, grinder in the late late 90s I was still in California this one here I've lost a sticker off of it but this is um, this is a DeWalt and I think it is still I think the number here is a uh, uh, 200545 dash 47 uh, DeWalt and um, I believe this is a 10 or 11 uh, amp tool and I went ahead and I, I put on um, a couple of the uh, T1 discs here as well uh, just to outfit them on these and to give them a try and that was my favorite tool even to this day it's still a favorite tool all right now I have a new one that uh, just came about all right and uh, this is a DeWalt 43 116 Six inch angle grinder now this is 13 amps and six inch capabilities with uh, two other guards that will enable you to have the proper guard for the proper disc and uh, we have this set up here for the disc that we're going to use and of course we're not plugged in yet and uh, we've got the the guard I think I'm pretty well in the area that we're going to want to be in and I'm going to put the nut on here now they gave us an allen wrench to tighten stick in here and tighten it up but you really shouldn't be snugging your 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 wheels up and I like to put my thumb on the lock and firmly grip the blade and bring it in a tightening position you can put the allen in there and you can do the same thing and and uh but I, I always had the feel of, of my hand. Sometimes I wear my glove, especially if you're going to be doing uh, your wire wheels and things like that. Um, anyway, we're ready to go. Now this this is a straight. The T1 is a, is a, is a straight wheel and it's only to be used in this direction right here. Um, it's not a conventional grinder where you're going to get in there and you're going to do some flattening out on the side of weld or whatever. Uh, this is made for slicing and dicing. All right. Now, I am set up. I have my face shield here and my gloves here and uh, and in my my glasses. Um, several years back, I had to actually have glasses made for me because I have stigmatism problem, and uh, uh, so. I've, I'm pretty much in full time in glasses all the time. Now these don't have side shields. They don't have pr protection for ricochets. Okay, and that's why you need one of these. All right, and and I'll be putting that on here in a second. I'm gonna change out my hat and uh, and put that on there. All right, um, we're gonna plug this in, and uh, 
We're going to go ahead and we're going to let it run for a couple seconds. Uh, just make sure that it's a good wheel. And uh, we do that by holding it away from us. Not in line with anybody else. Not in line with glass. Not in line with something that you <laughs> don't want scratched. Um, and just make sure that we have a sound wheel. Just like how many times have you changed a wheel and you're tired. It's the end of the day or whatever. And you drop it. And you drop it on the concrete. And then it fractures the wheel or whatever. Um, and then and then you've gone, oh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'll give it a shot. And then you, you go to hit it on your part there and it goes, da -da -da -da, bam, and it shatters on you. All right. Um, it's not it's not worth the accident. All right. Okay. One more. One more thing. You, you're going to be cutting this down on the bilges. And it would be a good idea for your direct line or fire where your sparks are going to be going to go ahead and pick up some fireproof fire retardant uh, blankets. And I'm just covering up over the top of my milling machine and my lathe because I'm working in here around the machinery and I don't want the dust and particles and the hot, hot sparks to blow directly in the ways area of the, of the lathe. So um, just, and, and the mill, I'm just doing a little bit of extra protection so that I can do the demonstration here where it's nice and comfortable for me. All right, uh, let's get, get our face shield on. Let's put our earplugs in. Can you hear me? All right. Um, all right, we're going to put on gloves here in a second. All right, our plug. And we're going to plug that in. That's a good heavy-duty extension cord going over to a nice outlet on the wall. All right, I'm going to grab my gloves here just because I want to run this up. First time running it. And we're going to hold it away from us. All right. I'm going to get here comfortable. We're going to get in a line. We're going to stay on this side of the guard. And I think that guard is going to be in a good position there. Okay, we're down on top of that key. <laughs> Where's our wedges? Okay, I had them in the other room. Anyway, we, we put in a wedge and it cracks that surface and then you're able to go ahead and slide this right off of there. Protects the shaft. No harm and you save yourself the big dollar, sacrifice the small dollar, and didn't use a whole disc, still ready to go for more. All right, I know you're not gonna have most ideal situations in, in the boat, okay? All right, there's the, uh, the keyway in there. You can see the cuts down here, but uh, no damage to the area where the coupling came off of and the split. All right, it was awesome. All right, that was short time compared to how long somebody wasted on trying to cut through with a hacksaw or sawzall or whatever it is. Aquaman material is pretty darn hard, all right? All right, so let's put this off to the side and we'll return that uh, that 50 cent shaft back to uh, the marina. Okay, for our next little test, because um, that was <laughs> that, that, that was unbelievably quick to cut and get that four inch coupling off of that one inch shaft. It's unbelievable. All right, uh, this, I went ahead and went out to the shelter and cut me a piece. This is a quarter inch wall thickness box tube. I think this is a uh, this two inch box tube, quarter inch wall. 
All right, now let's say we're out in the field uh, and we need to put an angle on here. Let's, uh, you know, I mean, you can always put a 45 degree angle on any of uh, mitering uh, band saws, right? Um, <clears throat> but let's, uh, let's, let's make it a little bit greater than a 45 angle because sometimes you, you're going to cut a 45 and you can do that in a shop. But let's just say that you don't have that. I'm just going to, let's see, there's, uh, there's 45 there. Let's just kick it. I don't know. That's like an additional 10. And we're going to lay it out on the other side because no matter how good I am, I, I tend to have a problem because even with the, a brand new blade in here, we're not going to we're not going to quite get all the way through there, especially by the time we cut a little bit, we're going to be we're going to be uh, wearing down the blade slightly. Okay, bring that one up here, bring that so that we got that that angle. There we go. All right. We've already done a run test and I got my visor down and we changed angles a little bit. Um, this is our second attempt on the box tube and that was, be that was because uh, laying it out only on one side, uh, we just didn't quite get so pretty. We want to try to make this a little bit more pretty. Okay, we just just went through. Okay, we're about halfway down in there. Now we're going to go ahead and rotate this around. We're going to have to swivel this a little bit. And let's adjust our camera. There we go. Move our airline over. We, uh, we're kind of looking at this and only a suggestion, but most of the time this handles up, but it would be cool to actually have a level bubble somewhat in that handle giving you exactly 90 to the blade because the handle screws in 90 to the head so that would be a pretty good area just a suggestion on any grinder really all right we're gonna uh, we're that side of the uh, line and we're like right on the line there so we're just gonna go ahead and follow that same pattern here We knew we were pretty close. All right, that's not bad. It's not bad. That's about half the thickness of the wheel there in being straight in line. Pretty cool. All right, let's just see how close we got there. And if we're laying it down, uh, that's one pass weldable there. That's that's for sure. <laughs> All 
Okay, let's change up here. We're going to change alloys that we're going to be testing. We got three examples here. This is a, a 304 Schedule 40 piece of one inch pipe. We have uh, 316 stainless steel quarter inch equal two inch angle iron. And we have a piece of inch and three eighths Aquamet 22, which is similar to 316 except for it has added alloys in it like molybdenum and nickel to create that strength of torsion and also corrosion resistance um, and it is some tough stuff and we're gonna we're gonna be testing that as well now we're gonna change out our blades here now both the 8953L and uh, 8953F both can cut stainless steel but the F is preferred for being a little more serious on cutting the stainless and that's what we're going to change this into now I tighten this on with by hand I showed you that through use torque heat a lot of times the nuts will tighten up tighter than you can release them with by hand and also too when it releases by hand sometimes it comes loose really fast and uh, you can come up with a, um, a nick or scratch uh, needless and Using the wrench is the best way to break that loose. And we'll set that off to the side. Let's set our wrench off to the side. And we'll put on the new blade here. Okay. And we're ready to plug this in. Okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna look and we got we probably have about a quarter inch of extra travel to go down through this pipe here all right so we'll uh we're all set up here we've already done our pre-run and we're just going to slice off a slice off the end of this pipe right here All right, that was a pretty clean cut. Pretty quick. All right, a quick mark here on the uh, on the angle, and we're just going to go ahead and mark it on both sides. Is that what we do? Instead of trying to take this all in one cut straight across through here, I'm going to come down this side here, and then we'll come down on the other side as well. All right, here we go. You notice how it, 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 it wants to pull that way when we come through? And that's what you want. You want to, you want to be cutting so that the, the, the kick is wanting to pull it away from you. All right, now we come in on this side. There we go. All right, we got the piece of Akhmet 22 in here, and I did put a new blade in here. Let me show you why. Um, uh, it, it's not that it wore down a lot, but it's, it's amount was not going to be, or it's going to be pretty close to, um, going all the way through in one cut. And I wanted to kind of try this in one cut with the blade. All right. So we're going to set that, that blade has still got plenty of cuts left on it. We're just trying to get this all in one cut here. All right. Now I'm just going to start like we did the, uh, the pipe. And I'm just going to cut a slug off the end of it here. All right, visor down.
There we go. That was that was letting the blade do the cutting. And we actually still had plenty on there and it really didn't wear that much off an eighth of an inch off of the outside of that blade. All right. That's pretty impressive and that was a lot quicker than trying to do it with a sawzall blade keeping your pressure firm and your uh and your speed down and lubricating it with some kind of uh cutting oils all right very impressed with that cut right there that's tough stuff that was awesome well they say the proof's in the pudding all right that that xp ceramic metal cutting wheel went through that coupling in like 30 seconds and the rest of those were good examples of things that I used to do in the field and I brought them in and shared them with you and walked to talk and DeWalt's uh, XP ceramic metal cutting wheels followed right along. All right, super happy, glad to share with you guys. Here's what everybody's been waiting for though. DeWalt has given away a high performance paddle switch grinder and 75 XP ceramic metal cutting wheels just like these. All right, all you have to do is comment down below before Friday, June 16th for your chance to win. All right, there is no purchase necessary. Official rules can be found in the description of this video, and here's a quick link right here. All right, I can't wait to get into the comments there, and neither can you. Um, I wonder who uh, DeWalt's going to pick for the winner. All right, until next time, get it done.